Silhouette Studio has been around for a while, and it received a facelift and some new features with version 4 to optimize workflow and become even more user-friendly. If you're used to Silhouette Studio version 3 or are trying to find your way through older tutorials that were published before version 4 was released, then this video will help you navigate your way through the visual differences and button locations in version 3 versus version 4. What will look familiar to you upon opening Silhouette Studio is the design workspace. In version 3, you could get back to this main section if you had navigated elsewhere by clicking this icon on the left or one of the windows along the top. Now in version 4, you simply click on this main tab in the upper right for Design. Silhouette Studio version 4 is divided into four navigation tabs along the top right-hand side, Design, Store, Library, and Send. In version 3, you could access the Design page, the Store, and the Library along the left, but these have been given a more prominent position in version 4. The Send panel replaces version 3's Cut Settings and Send to Silhouette windows, I'll talk more about the Send panel in a minute. A new feature in version 4 is the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar provides a quick access to frequently used panel tools. This was not available in version 3, but it's worth mentioning. This toolbar can be used to resize, color, or modify selected shapes or text. It's a dynamic toolbar, so the features shown depend on what you have selected on your page. The icons you can see also depend on your screen size. Watch for small arrows to expose more available tools. Now let's talk about panels. Version 4 has replaced stationary windows with panels. In version 3, you had windows that would open for your important functions in Silhouette Studio, and the icons were found across the top. In version 4, you can now open these important functions as floating panels. To have multiple panels open at once, move a panel from the default location. It will remain open when you click another panel icon. Otherwise, any new panel you open will replace the one that was already open if you leave your preference settings at the default flexible panel mode. Here are a few differences in buttons and icons. The fills for color, gradient, and pattern were listed separately here in version 3. Now in version 4, they're all housed with the fill panel that looks like a painter's palette. Click the various tabs to find fill colors, fill gradients, and fill patterns. The shadow window, if you have designer edition, and shader effects are now housed together in the image effects panel that looks like a half white, half black circle. The sketch and rhinestone icons have changed. These are designer edition features, and you'll find them in the lower section of the panels. The icons look like a scribble and a rhinestone. The offset tool now looks like a solid star with an outline. Line Color and Line Style are now housed together in the Line Style panel. The Text Style window still looks about the same as a Text Style panel. Move, Rotate, Scale, Shear, and Align are now housed all together in the Transform panel. The Panels icon looks like the Align icon with three vertical rectangles. Each function is in its own tab, and many of these can also be found in the Quick Access Toolbar. The Replicate icon hasn't changed much, although there are some additional tabs and a new version 4 feature for Object on Path. The Nesting icon, for Designer Edition users, looks different in version 4. It used to look like an N, but now looks like interlocked combs. The Modify panel looks slightly different and can be found below the Replicate panel. The Trace window has become the Trace panel. The Butterfly icon looks just a little different in version 4. 
There are a few extra tabs in the Trace panel with features new in version 4 if you have Designer Edition or higher, and those are covered in separate videos. The Design Page Settings window has become the Page Setup panel, and it's the top panel here on the right. You'll now find the Grid and Registration Marks options as tabs in the Page Setup panel. Emboss and Stipple now look like star shapes. They're still only accessible to Curio users and Cameo 3 for stippling. Other Business Edition features you don't see on my screen for version 3 are all found in the lower section of the panels, and you can watch our how-to videos on each feature and how it works in version 4. If your screen is small, watch for an arrow to pop out additional panel choices that don't fit on your screen. Let's move on to Drawing Tools. The Drawing, Shape, and Text Creation tools are all on this toolbar on the left. In version 3, you could find these in the same general area on the left, but they were all spread out. Now the Drawing tools are condensed with flyouts to access the various line, shape, and freehand drawing tools. Text, Eraser, and Knife are about the same, but you'll see your Eraser and Knife options show up in the Quick Access Toolbar when in use. You still have Select and Point Editing in about the same place in version 4 compared to version 3, but the icons have changed slightly. On to the Library. In version 3, the Library icon looked like an open book and was found along the left-hand side. In version 4, it has a more prominent place in the upper right as a primary navigation tab. The Design Store has been moved from this small spot on the left to a primary navigation tab as well. You can no longer access a split screen for the library and drawing area in version 4 like you could in version 3. The library in version 4 is divided into a local user library and a cloud library. You can find out more about that in our video for Silhouette Cloud Storage. In version 3 of Silhouette Studio, there were a few ways to access the window where you send the cut job to your machine. Along the top here on the left, and two different icons over here on the right. In version 4, this has all been condensed into one Send panel found here in the Navigation tab for Send. This window is perhaps the most different from what you are used to in version 3. Simple has replaced Standard Cut Mode. Your former choices for Advanced can now all be seen here as action choices for Cut by Line, Cut by Fill, and Cut by Layer. Cut Style for Selected Shapes can now be found here as No Cut, Cut, and Cut Edge. Perforation choices are no longer here, as you can simply choose a perforation as a line style in the Line Style panel. Tool choices are here and here, instead of side-by-side -side columns crammed into a small space, with the need for a lot of scrolling. Multiple tool choices only show up if you have a machine with a dual carriage, like the Cameo 3 and Curio. Now for each tool, you can click on these drop-down arrows to choose a material, an action, and a tool. Generally, the tool will auto-fill upon choosing a preset material and action. Adjustments to blade depth, speed, and force can be made here. Force used to be called thickness in version 3. Double cut has been replaced with passes, and you can choose more than two. Line segment overcut can be checked on or off and any additional settings or material changes you want to make or add can be accessed by clicking on these three small dots. Curio users will find the platform suggestions in this section too. Advanced settings, formerly here below the test cut, can be accessed with this gear icon. Your test cut button is now down here. This large blue Send button has replaced Send to Silhouette. You can find Setup Instructions here, Connect to Bluetooth here, and Machine Details here. There are just a few more differences I want to point out that have changed from version 3. The Pick Scan icon has been moved to its own panel labeled with PIX. Several icons used to be found along the bottom of the screen in version 3, 
but now they can be found at the top or in the quick access toolbar such as group and ungroup, select all, deselect all, select by color, duplicate, delete, bring to front or send to back, weld, and offset. The transfer properties eyedropper has been moved over here to the left. And layers has its own panel on the right. Document management tools and zoom and pan tools stayed basically the same. That's it. Now you know where all your tools have gone when updating from version 3 to version 4. I think you'll love the new interface. Remember, you can find how-to videos on the various features of version 4 on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.